Hey guys, how's it going? We got something pretty special here on guns.com today. We're leaving the guns for a minute and we're gonna be delving into the world of slingshots. This is uh, the pocket hammer. Now these guys have chosen to leave the traditional design of the two straps coming back that you pull with the ammo in it, shoot. And they've opted for the design which they believe is the future of slingshots and that is this rubber bag. You basically put your ammo in there, you pinch it, you pull it back, you aim and pow, you fire. Now, I saw some videos on the internet and I saw this on the internet. I thought it looked really cool. I wanted to do a review on it, so I contacted the fellow who makes the thing. He was good enough to send me out this, this product right here. And we're gonna be putting it through its paces today. We've got some targets set up here. We're gonna be checking for power, for accuracy. And we've got a slow-mo cam too, so that should be really cool. We're gonna be seeing what this little bad boy can do. As I mentioned, the pocket hammer features a rubber bag or pocket instead of the traditional straps. I like it. You just drop your ammo in and fire. You can shoot pretty much anything you want from the pocket hammer. However, included in the box that I was sent for this review was a bag of 100 5 16 steel ball bearings. They are approximately 30 caliber and weigh around 70 grains. They work perfectly in the slingshot. It's also possible to shoot arrows from the pocket hammer with a special pocket and quiver. You need to order the special arrows from pocket hammer. However, for this review, I'm focusing solely on firing steel balls. I filled a bunch of aluminum cans with water and set them up to see what kind of damage the pocket hammer could inflict upon them. I shot from 10 yards away. Now I haven't shot a slingshot in years, so I'm a little bit rusty. But still, within half a dozen shots, I was starting to pick off the cans like a pro. The ball coming out of the pocket hammer is traveling at around 350 feet per second. Now this is enough for the ball to easily pass through the can and keep going. Just to show the difference though, I shot the exact same can filled with water with a 22 long rifle bullet. The 40 grain bullet leaving a Ruger 10-22 rifle is traveling at 1200 feet per second. It caused the can to absolutely explode. So there's definitely a big difference in power between the 22 long rifle bullet and a 70 grain steel ball bearing coming out of the pocket hammer at roughly 350 feet per second. I then proceeded to test the pocket hammer on some plastic quart juice containers, again from 10 yards distance. Interestingly, the first shot failed to penetrate the container. I hadn't pulled the pocket back full enough. The next time I gave it all I could and the ball easily penetrated the bottle. So if you really want to get some power, you got to pull the pocket back all the way. This does make me question if the pocket hammer could kill a squirrel. Not that you would want to murder a squirrel because it's actually illegal in many places to do that. But if you absolutely had to, say you lived on a farm and had a squirrel infestation, I don't think the pocket hammer would be strong enough. It would certainly give the squirrel a very bad day. If you hit it. And that's my next test. Accuracy. Now by this time I'd fired around 50 balls through the pocket hammer and I was starting to get a feel for it. I set up a target with a 14 inch outer circle and inside shrinking concentric circles down to a 2 inch red bullseye. I backed off 10 yards and let loose. I fired 11 shots and I managed to get 2 in the bullseye and all 9 others within the 14 inch circle. Now this isn't bad, even if you were firing a short barreled pistol at the same distance it would be hard to get the same results. Now there's obviously a learning curve when it comes to the pocket hammer. Now with some practice, I believe that I could get all of the shots within the red bullseye. Now if I were to back off 20 or 30 yards, I think that accuracy would suffer greatly. But again, with a ton of practice, anything is possible. In terms of the quality of the product, I had no issues whatsoever. After 100 balls, I saw no signs of breakage or damage. I think that this product could stand up to thousands of rounds without any problem whatsoever. The possibility of shooting arrows is a really neat addition and I'll probably pick some up in the future and give it a try. Overall, I give this product two thumbs up. For a hundred bucks, you get the full pocket hammer kit that comes with lots of extras. It's well built, it's well designed, and did I mention, it's a lot of fun to shoot. I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did, don't forget to like it, and please consider subscribing to the Guns.com YouTube channel to enjoy many more fun and informative videos such as this.